Love you, buddy. New York, one of the most famous cities in America. In our last episode, the three chefs Dong Chen Li, Lu Zhang Yong, and Jay Cho made their dishes in their special ways to prove they were the best chefs in this big city. In today's episode, we're going to see three other chefs. They're Jenny Wang, Chu Kiko, and David Park. Are they going to do better than the last three chefs? Let's interview our first chef, Jenny. Jenny is a private chef, a business consultant, as well as a food writer and blogger. She is currently the founder and executive chef at I Forgot Is Wednesday Super Club, a weekly gathering of foodies in New York City. I'm Jenny. I'm a chef based out of New York City, and uh, in my past, I was a finance major and went into management consulting after college. Decided that really wasn't my passion in life, and just Kind of one day woke up and quit and went to culinary school. So I've been pursuing the culinary field since then, and I'm trying to marry both business and my culinary skills together. And the supper club kind of came about because through all of that, the main thing I left culinary school with was just a greater appreciation of the people that I've been there with and what we've been through, and also just connecting with people on a different level. Which that being. Said, I think food really connects people and helps stimulate that sort of conversation. So, so the supper club is to really just bring people together and I love doing that. Um, I hope to bring definitely some Asian flavors. I think there's some definitely a very underappreciated Chinese, um, Japanese, like other Asian flavors that I would love to use. I think the Asian culture is something really spectacular. I think there's some, nothing really that quite, it's hard to explain to people uh, what it entails and what our family dynamic is like. Um, there's definitely been, I think, a lot of press on how Asian families run, from like the tiger moms, to, like, oh, this and that. But at the bottom of that, there's something that people don't understand about Asian culture, and it's just like the long standing strife and like sacrifice that pe our parents are willing to go through for us to have a better life. I don't think a lot of people just truly understand how much, at least I don't even quite understand how much my parents went through like saving money, making sure that I would have the right education. And even though they don't understand why I went to culinary school, why I wanted to do all these things, they've been, you know, they've kind of said, okay, just go ahead and do it because isn't that the point of them coming here is giving us the luxury to choose. Uh, my slogan, uh, well, that's a hard one, but um, recently I've been really inspired and I think my slogan is like, food that makes you think. Start! Time. Jenny just finished her dish. Her assistants are delivering her masterpiece to the judges. The judges seem like they can't wait any longer. It must be delicious because all the judges enjoy Jenny's dishes. Thank you. 
Let's take a look at our second chef, Chun Ki Ko, currently holding the position of executive chef for Fushimi restaurants in NYC. Chun Ki Ko has previously worked for Fame Jean George's Von Churichin and headed Buddha Bar's kitchen in Washington, D.C. I'm from Seoul, Korea, and I grew up in the, the restaurant industry because my mom and my father, they also the restaurant, uh, they, uh, they do the restaurant business in Seoul. So my mom is uh, uh, owns a Japanese, and my father owns a, a traditional Korean uh, restaurant. So I grew up with the restaurant industry, so uh, that's why I uh, became a chef. And uh, I, I went to a French culinary school when I was a trainee, and uh, after that I used to work. I worked for a lot of uh, uh, European uh, to French restaurants, and then uh, after 10 years later, one of my old chefs told me, uh, that you are Asian, so maybe you should learn some Asian, you know, cooking techniques whatsoever. So that's why I start learning some Japanese skills and, and any any Asian uh, uh, cooking method and the techniques. Um, a lot of uh, like American or French, other other the other than uh, Asian people, Asian chefs, um, they have their cooking or cooking techniques in the they the the Buddhist phenomenon, but they use a lot of Asian ingredients. Vice versa, a lot of Asian people they start using a lot of um, the, the butters, a lot of cream, right, um, the cheese. So it's it's a uh, it's uh, now now it's, it's it's very hard to say. It's very this is a French food. This is a, like a Chinese food. This is a Japanese food. Except the sushi, it's all mixed up. It's kind of a fusion. 
uh, my food is like uh, perfect on the, on the dish. Like some people just uh, care about the, uh, the presentation, but it's so bland. And it, it, it's like a fashion. Uh, everybody loves, uh, you know, like uh, nice clothes. You know, they're looking for a uh, high end, you know, very uh, the main brand. So it, it's it's like a passion. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm I'm working as a chef, but I, I also think about I'm the type of artist. Time. Chun's dish looks great. It's really the art of food. The judges stare at Chun's dishes because they're so eye-catching. They can not only see the art but taste it as well. Let's listen in what Chun has to say. Okay. You can see the light skill and using all different light skills. Yes. 
including cut, dice, meat, and also using heavy all the paper. Chinacha, right? This is a five sauce here. And one five sauce, sauce, five sauce, sauce here. Dish. This one is a little bit bitter, right? If the chef like bitter, heavy, excellent. But this one, I think it's over, a little bit overdone. The other one, combination, using chinua, the tahi, the chinua, yeah. is excellent. With the, with the egg yolk. The egg yolk. That's yeah. why you can see it is very unique. Yes. So you use it in your drink. Yeah. I think you use it for the tahi. Light scale, excellent, chef. Light scale, excellent. Yeah. And also, very creative. I love you. <laughs> Jump. Jump. We'll be right back for our last chef. David is currently sous chef at Storefront Company in Chicago. He has previously worked for famed chef Takashi and Dakihashi at his flagship restaurant Takashi, as well as under Grand Archives as chef de parte at the Avery. I'm David, uh, I'm from Chicago. I was most recently a sous chef at Storefront Company. It's no longer existing, uh, so I'm kind of been working on my own business ventures right now, trying to figure out what I want to do next. Today's competition, uh, I don't know, something Asian obviously. A lot of Asian flavors, but with a lot of Western influences. So I never really worked in an Asian kitchen. Uh, so everything I take in is pretty much everything that I've learned throughout American restaurants. And I want I wanted that to showcase about the flavors I wanted to see in the kitchen. It's like, it's a secret ingredient, so I had no idea. So I didn't really prepare for it, I was just thinking about food in general. I mean, I'm gonna try my best, that's for sure. I can't guarantee anything, but I'm gonna definitely do my best. Uh, we're here to win. Start! Showtime! David got some problems because when he was almost finished with the dish, he failed to put everything he wanted into the dish when the time was over. But this dish looks amazing as well. The judges seem like they enjoy his food very much. Yeah. 
and the shallot actually added a little spiciness yeah. right in the back of your throat. It's that I mean, it's not good. You're not expecting it right now. So, very nice. Award. The competition has finished. All the three chefs are gathering together waiting for the announcement. In fact, all the people in the hall are looking forward to hearing the result. And the winner! And there's no particular order. They both receive the highest overall score awarded by a single judge. Winner number one! Jay Jones! Woo! You're on Woo! Our students! Let's give a big round of applause to Jay! And winner number two! Gonna be a lot of happy people here! Let's congratulate these two lucky winners. They proved their own talents by cooking their best dishes. We will see them in Las Vegas very soon. Hopefully, they will be the final winners. The rest of the chefs also did a pretty good job. Their delicious food have impressed the judges and all the people here. There is no doubt that all these chefs are great East Coast chefs. Thank them for their hard work. The Culinary Battles show would not be successful without their excellent performance. In our next episode, we're going to Los Angeles. A few West Coast chefs will be competing over there. Will they do better than the East Coast chefs? We shall see.